So let's get started with our review of the BoomX DD1. I know it says D on the box, but it actually the uh, the actual part number is uh, DD1. And this is a remote microphone link which links this little transmitter, which has got a built-in microphone, back to the camera, and you can also use this lavalier. And they reckon the range of this is about 100 meters, and we've been taking it out and performing various tests on it. We're here at Middlethorpe Hall, just outside York. It's a beautiful William and Mary house, and what you can see is that I'm walking through the ha-ha. And what is a ha-ha? A ha-ha was developed in the 18th century in landscape by landscape designers and it's a dip in the ground and it's designed to keep animals out of the formal gardens but without a fence because a fence would spoil the view whereas a ha-ha because it's down in a depression doesn't spoil the view from the main house. Okay so what's in the box? Obviously there's the transmitter, the receiver, there's a lavalier mic, a USB uh, cable for charging, and then we've got these three kind of handy cables here. Um, to me, it's quite interesting that the Canon and the Sony Panasonic, so that's Canon Nick on Sony Panasonic, are exactly the same kind of cable, so we can only assume that they're um, wired internally differently. And then you've got this cable here, which is for smartphones, or if you've got the right kind of adapter, that will go into uh, an iOS phone. Um, so one of the things that I particularly like about it is the fact that the uh, receiver, which is here, transmitter receiver, fits really neatly into the hot shoe of the camera. So it's just a case of fitting it in there, picking the right cable, which is the Canon Nikon, using the out, and then plugging into the uh, microphone connector here. And that's a job done tick. In fact, I might prefer it the other way around, actually. That end, that end, yep, yeah, that just feels a little bit more secure. So there you are, connected to the camera. If you can't wait for golden hour, you can just bring this one with you. If you can't wait for golden hour, you can just bring this one with you. If you can't wait for golden hour, you can just bring this one with you. So let's have a little chat about the controls. Uh, we'll start with the receiver. So here's the receiver, and it appears that it can receive from two different channels, A and B, and you can choose A and B to be in a stereo mode or a mono mode, so at the moment we're in a mono mode. Um, this is transmitting on A at the moment. Let me just uh, take this off. If I... Uh, I don't know if that will pick up, maybe we need to use a different lens, but um, you can see the level going up and down on there and you can see the level going up on there uh, because they're paired. If you need to increase the level, um, you press either the A or B button and it goes through a several sets of steps and goes back to 0 dB. It doesn't go any quieter than 0 dB. Uh, there's a headphone output there as well and the headphone output hasn't got any volume control on it or it hasn't got any volume control at I can discern, but it seems to be about the right level. And of course, what can make the amateur gardener more happy than coming to the end of their travels and finding plants for sale, babies from the garden, and I'll certainly be putting some cash in the honesty box and taking these home. Okay, okay now, unfortunately, unfortunately, it would appear that on the last job I went out to, I managed to leave my clapper board. Um, so we're going to have to do this the hard way. There is always a delay with these wireless links. So just up here, we've got a Rode NT5. Here we've got the um, DD1 transmitter. So if I choose a position about here, and I'll just kind of do it in the blue screen here, and I'm gonna clap my hands and we're gonna look at the delay. We can calculate the delay here, which is just over one frame at 24 frames a second, which works out at roughly 50 milliseconds. We have a professional spectrum analyzer to measure what this wireless system is doing and how it uses the available radio spectrum. 
and then we use a controlled interference source to see how it's going to react to radio interference and what we expect to happen in real life situations. So here's the wider band view of the um, Comica. You can see that it generates frequencies below 2.4 and above 2.5. This is pairing, so it's off at the moment. Then we switch it on and you can see the packets of information going all over the frequency band. And then we're going to switch it off and you'll see in the waterfall sweep, which is the one below, that the packets of data disappear like that. Then we tried a narrow band startup where we try to get the Comica to negotiate itself into a different band and it doesn't. You can see that it just writes its way all the way through there. Um, during this test, we're, I am walking away with the receiver and we generally find that the range is about 10 meters with all this interference going on from the sweep generator. That's the data that you're seeing in the middle. There's a dropout that you've just seen coming through. And then we changed the sweep interval to be one megahertz, so and moving reasonably quickly. But again, that you see the Comica is just generating its data all the way across the band. And once again, with the TX very near the sweep interference generator, you get about 10 meters and you can just see some of the dropouts uh, coming in through um, here. We then cranked it up a little bit to use. Um, a 50 megahertz interval that was running really fast. Uh, that's coming up here. And this proved to be the most effective at disturbing the Comicas. And occasionally we got down to about two meters, but that is a really um, arduous test. Uh, and obviously when you switch the interference off, there's a dropout coming through. Um, when you switch the interference off, the range goes right back up to the 90 meters. Um, here's the narrow band sweep test as we tried again to try and get this thing to work. But again, you can see that the data is just distributed all the way across the 2.4 up to 2.5 gigahertz band. Um, so that leads us on to some conclusions, really, which is about the way that the Comica constructs its data and how it sends it to the RX. So. The conclusion is, is that the data is put into multiple packets that are shifted across the frequency spectrum and the RX just puts them all together and that's the way it doesn't get disturbed by the reasonably RF aggressive tests that we were making. We've been testing the XDD1 under a bunch of very interesting conditions today. At the moment, the camera's quite close, but earlier it was 90 odd meters in that direction. One of our learnings from today is that the plugs on the cables are particularly stiff, and we were getting a one-sided mono image earlier and found that we had to push the plugs in more positively to get a decent connection. The other thing we're doing is we're testing this FB44 lamp from uh, light fitting from Soonwell that does have the unfortunate situation of having a particularly noisy control unit. So at the moment, we've got the control unit indoors and we've got the extension lead on it so that we we can have uh, the lamp outside without any noise. So the short conclusion for this uh, Boom XDD1 is that it works straight out of the box. I didn't need to pair it. I didn't even need to charge it. It came charged. Um, the leads work perfectly with both the Canon 5D4 and with the Blackmagic uh, 6K that we're using at the moment. It's got a little bit of delay on it and the quality is perfectly acceptable and for the size of it, it the fact that it just fits in your box or fits in your bag and it's just ready to go so there you go thoroughly recommended so this light here mimics golden hour and golden hour is a term used by instagrammers influencers and bloggers online um, it's a popular light because it's very golden which means that it often gives um, the person in the photo a really lovely tanned healthy and golden glow 